TGIF, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this Friday, December 21st. Here we are. A little different around here with you in the, I mean, in the hot we, seat, we made Frank. it as a team, finally. I am so glad I you are here. Of course, we too. know Frank is our chief meteorologist here at KPRC <laughs> Channel 2. What does that mean? Like, you're the head of all the meteorologists. Yeah, you know what? That term was not at, uh, at any station in, in Houston until I got here in 95, and Steve <laughs> Wasserman, our general manager, said, we're going to call you the chief meteorologist, which I think he got from other markets, but he brought a lot of innovation to this station, which is part of the whole 70th thing we're doing in January, just all the, the things we have brought to Houston TV, and that was one of them. And I'm like, Okay, I can okay. That. okay I'll everybody else was just the weatherman, and then all of a sudden, you know, then then everybody else became a chief meteorologist. It just means you're the guy at six o'clock. <laughs> I think it means a little more than that. You are such a pioneer in so many ways, Frank. By the way, you I know, know what is this? Well, this is from Lady M Cakes in New York. This is like a thing here. This is like twenty layers of cream. Look twenty at that. layers of cream with crepes. This in is between. like the way I stack my Pringles. <laughs> yeah, and several times a year they do a pop-up shop at the Galleria, usually by Saks or Nordstrom. <laughs> but they sent this especially for you, Frank, because they this knew be, you were here. Yeah, well, this would be perfect on a table. Setting your table in style, just put this. Cake on it. Oh my gosh, I know. <laughs> That's all yeah. you would need. I, we're going to talk about that, by the way. Easy, beautiful, affordable tablescapes. I know. Even, I didn't know it was called tablescape. Even anymore. I can do this. But it's for the, uh, your New Year's party. Yeah, very, Which you really can do anytime fancy. you're having a big festive. Because New Year's is kind of, you know, it's New Year's, but it could be any time you're having a, just a fun party. Really. Absolutely. You yeah. want the table to look good. Yeah. Also, you know, at New Year's, a lot of people are a little bit superstitious and they think about foods that are gonna bring them luck. I know, it's so good, right? Mm -hmm. And from black eyed peas to grapes, some people say that foods can actually increase your chances of luck in the new year. And today our friends from Hardy's Fresh Foods, they're here with some of the theories behind be these lucky foods. Especially if it's fried. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, so before we get to all that though, Frank, we wanna chat a little bit more about you because obviously people know you as part of the community. I'm sure you get stopped every day in Houston. You've been here since 95? I've actually been in Houston since 89. Yeah, mm. I was at the competition as the weekend guy for six years. Okay. And then they brought me over here as the main guy in 95. And that's how we then they became came number one. <laughs> right? <laughs> what? That's how we became number one? Uh, no, 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 no. Number one is a team effort, believe me. Well, now, we have such great talent here. And, great, and honestly, we have, I, I know this sounds like a suck up, but we really have great management. You know, yeah. that, that knows how to guide the guide the ship without trying to do all the paddling themselves. You know what I mean? We also have very nice staff, don't you think? Yes. I mean, Channel 2 people are very, very nice. I love coming to work every day because yep. whether I'm seeing Dominique in the halls or Lauren Freeman or Andy Sirota, everyone is just so oh, yeah. super, super genuinely nice. Yes, and my experience in television has always been that way. I've always worked with nice people. I know that there probably are some people that aren't, but mostly it's pretty nice. Is there anything, I mean, obviously you're such a natural here, like seeing you do the weather all the time. Is there anything during your day that's still like... I don't know, throws a curveball your way. Well, some forecasts are harder than others. I mean, like, you know, la what, last week, uh, we were talking about the possibility of some snow, you know, and everybody kind of goes, okay, really? And you want the answer, you know? That's what you want to try to get to is the answer. Um, so that could be, I wouldn't say it's a curveball, but you, I, I approach weather like a reporter. Who, what, when, where, why? Who's gonna be affected? When, where, why? How? Just answer those basic questions. Uh, I think that's what people want to know. That's, yeah. that's that, Weather is a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you tell that story to the viewer the way they want to hear it, I think you'll be successful. You can't, hmm. can't, you can't overload them with science. Well, and also weather is such a huge deal in Houston because it can have life-changing consequences. <laughs> and, does. Oh, and I remember during Harvey, you guys were on the air all day and all night you were yep. barely sleeping you were taking little naps here at the station well, who but could people, sleep, really you know? oh i know yeah. i mean it was like people's lives were turned upside down yeah. overnight but people really turned to you to be one of the leading voices during well, that time. well you know i've been i've been around since 82 really doing weather i mean from uh, alicia was actually my first hurricane to pr cover professionally i was working in virginia but that that was that was in 83 i started in september of 82 oh and then 83 was my my first summer of covering hurricanes and from there you know through the 80s and the 90s and and on into this century I covered a lot so i i know how to tell people what they want to know i don't always know exactly what a hurricane is going to do or how bad it's going to be but i know what people want to know about it yeah. and i know how to try to find the answer that's the key it's it's amazing frank for me to even think about you doing anything else with your career because you're such a natural <laughs> fit but is it true that you had originally planned on going to law school oh yeah 
You know, when I was 14, I told my parents, because I grew up on Perry Mason. I told my parents, for Christmas, I want a legal dictionary. Oh, wow. And I started to take in Latin so I'd be able to understand it. <laughs> when you were 14? Yeah, and I would read this dictionary because I thought, I'll get ahead of the game. If oh I'm going to go gosh. to law school, I need to know all these Latin terms like habeas corpus and modus operandi and all these kind of things. I know. And right. what a cute little oh, one you were, too. I know. And, of course, people know, of course, you, you released your book, Swabbed and Found, and yep. so people know that you are adopted. Yeah, But you months. also know your biological parents, right? I do. That was the last three years uh, that I discovered who they were. Um, my mom and dad there that you see. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that haircut and that That tux. was the haircut and that was the tuxedo, okay? When was that? Was that high school, college? <laughs> oh, that was a while back. That was the old fraternity shot there. You were uh, in and fraternity. that guy, the second oh. one, that's Charlie Prelo. A lot of people know him here in Houston. He's a big shot here in Houston. Look he was at a fraternity those brother old of photos. Wow, wow. The, the many hairstyles of Frank. Well, but not, but this one, well, uh, Georgia Salon on Kirby did this one today. But generally speaking, I, I can't change my hair. You know, all these guys like you have these fades and all that kind of, no, I got to go with the billboard. What I've been doing for 30 years is pretty much <laughs> it. Same color, too. If I didn't have color in my hair, I wouldn't know what color it is. Well, <laughs> it looks fantastic. It looks like Mother Nature gave you that color. Let's no. talk a little bit about your early career, too, uh, working for the Winn-Dixie grocery store. Oh, yeah, yes. I, You know, Kate Jackson was from Birmingham, and her mother would patronize the Winn-Dixie, and I would carry her groceries out. And, and of course, I'd, be, I'd try to be casual, like, so, how's Kate doing? <laughs> you had a crush on Kate? No, but everybody wanted to know her because she was a movie star. Oh, you know? okay, got she it. Was I was like, she was Charlie's Angels. She was one of the original me. Charlie's Angels. Oh, of course she was. Yeah, and, and everybody knew it, and everybody knew her mom, and her mom tipped well, like like a dollar, which the average was a quarter back then. What to tip your grocery guy? How much were you making an hour back then? Do you know? Two ten. Two ten. I know 210 everything I've ever made, Derek. <laughs> that is impressive. And were you always this friendly? Because it seems like... Oh, yeah. I got all that in high school. and Yeah, friendliest and all that. Yeah, class president. And I, you know what? I like people and I was nice to everybody. <clears throat> That's amazing. And you still are today. That is so true. I, I never met a stranger. And I think I get that from my mom. Uh, she's the same way. Pat. P-A-T. Pat Billingsley. P-A-T. Oh, she spells this. her name. Thank God it's only three letters. Yeah. <laughs> Easy to spell, If it was right? six letters, she'd be lost. And, and if, the one, if it wasn't for Chico's, I don't know what we'd do. Uh, she's we'd be, we would be, we would not have clothes if it was not for Chico's. She looks great. She's a so gorgeous well lady. And she's so sweet and full of personality. My dad, he was a CPA, very smart guy. He said when I was 21, he said, congratulations, you're now on your own. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, what, no pressure at all. <laughs> That's code for uh, we're not supporting you. That's exactly what it Get was. Get out. That's and my biological this? mother and my biological aunt that I found. Oh, that is so nice. Yes. That you, it's like a big old blended family. I, the, the aunt's, I think I look more like the aunt than the mother, but... <laughs> That, but there you go. But, well, genetics are funny things. We got to talk about your marriage because on 12, 12, 12, yep. you married the love of your life, yep. Kevin. You Devin. married him in New York City. And yeah, because it was together. legal there. It became legal in New York City uh, or in New York State uh, in 2011. And we didn't know how long it would be before it became national or certainly to Texas. Otherwise, we would have waited until we knew and until got married in Texas. Because the marriage certificates in Texas are a whole lot prettier. They look like elevator <laughs> certificates in New York State. They're awful. They're green. They, you, you don't want to put them in a frame. They're horrible. If, you, if I'd known, I would have brought it. It's like, ugh. But in Texas, they're like scrolly and really pretty. But, um, but yeah, 12, 12, 12, so I, so I could remember it. And because Wednesdays for a marriage in New York are a whole lot cheaper than a Saturday. <laughs> Let me tell you. You really planned this out, didn't you? Well, we started, we thought about it in, in July of 2011. And then we had, you know, a year and a half to save. And we did. We saved every month. And, um, and then we had about 70 people. So that's that was fun. so great that you did that. And really a pioneer because I think people oftentimes forget, like, it's a little different for some folks. Like, you can still get fired in Texas just for being gay. You know, mm -hmm. there, there are reasons why I think it's great that when you got married and you went public with everything, you know, I think you changed a lot of people's lives and opened people's minds. Well, there's a story that we tell, and I tell in the book, where uh, Kevin was at one of the Home Depots, and this woman motioned him over and gave him this big hug and said, I saw your wedding on TV, and I want you to know you saved our family. Because uh, my niece is a lesbian and was going through this. The family was split. There was all this fighting. And everybody saw your wedding on TV and said, well, if it's good enough for Frank, we'll, we'll get through it. Oh, my I know. gosh. So, you know, if you can affect one person's life and make it better, 
then you've done your job today, right? That is incredible. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we all get groceries. We all, you know, just want to feel safe and, and Kate loved Jackson's and mother does. I know that. Yeah, for sure. And you have a little, your dog, Ocean, which is Ocean. part of the family. And he's you know, been... we started with Rock, and then we had Hudson. So we had Rock, Hudson, and then <laughs> Rock died. So we got River. So we had Hudson, River, and then Hudson died. And then we had River, Ocean, and now River's gone. Ocean so it's just Ocean. Adorable. But we have a terrier today, I think. But <laughs> Oh, my gosh, I know. We have some cute little animals coming up on the show. By the way, very briefly, before we get into what's coming up on the show, yeah. you all, of course, know Franklin went through some cancer procedures recently. Yes. How's, the, how's the health doing it's these days? It's as good as it can be right now. Uh, the MRI still had, you know, swelling from the procedure and hemorrhaging, so you can only see so much. But what they could see looked clean, but we got to wait three months for it to really d solve itself and look at it again. Then there's part of the team there. Yeah. That lady on the right, uh, uh, Naomi Hallis, she invented these gold nanoparticles. Those and they put, them in, they put them in my prostate, and then they use light to make them vibrate, and that vibration causes heat. The heat ablates the cancer. So, but it, it also causes swelling and bleeding. So, you know, so far it looks great, but three months, every, every cancer conversation ends with the words, let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's Listen, hope. we Three have our fingers, toes, everything crossed to call you cancer-free. Hey, you know what? Optimism is the key. And, well, really the key is early detection. But one, early de if you find out you have any kind of issue with your health, just be optimistic. Yeah. You know, and keep go going. Get that keep PSA going. Every, day, every minute's a new minute. That's true. Yep. Well, Frank, we love the smile on your face. We're so glad you're here with us today <laughs> in Houston Life. And as always, we have a great show coming up. Coming up after the break, it's a holiday tradition for many Hispanic families making and eating buñuelos. I hope I'm saying that correctly. They're said to bring you good luck and fortune in the new year. We'll get a lesson from the buñuelos lady herself right after this. All right, so if you've ever been to the East End Farmer's Market, you'll probably recognize our next guest and her delicious buñuelos. Buñuelos. Here to teach us how to make this holiday treat is the buñuelo lady. Si. <laughs> this is Celia Diaz. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm very... Uh, are you busy this season already? Oh, very busy. I bet. How, okay, so, so what's a buñuelo? Well, a buñuelo is like a crispy cinnamon tortilla. Ooh. Um, and it's sprinkled with uh, cinnamon and sugar, and we have them for good luck for the new year. That but sounds it, delicious. It sounds so easy, but it can't be that easy. It Basically, it's kind of simple. It is, uh, you know, if you plan to make a whole bunch of them, it is uh, labor consuming, but as far as the ingredients, it's very simple ingredients. S well, Celia, you know, jump in. Traditionally, okay. Why don't you show so, us how it's done? Okay, so I have two cups of uh, flour. Okay, just regular okay, all-purpose It's already flour. measured in here. It's all regular purpose flour. Okay. And I have a teaspoon of baking powder. So far I can do this. Yeah, uh, so far powder. so good, right? And powder. a teaspoon of salt. Salt. Where did you learn this? I learned it from my grandmother. It, when it was uh, the new year, my grandmother would say, okay, it's time for the new, you know, to make buñuelos. And she would, um, get all her clean sheets and linens and put them, drape them over the beds and everything because she would make like tons of them. She would make like tubs full. Wow. And she, what you do is you roll them out and... Um, so what you're doing here turns into this? It turns into this. And stuff. what was that last then, ingredient you just oh, added? Was I that put, like um, a Crisco or something? Yes, uh, it was a third a cup of Crisco. And then you add... Um, <laughs> There, oh, wow. there it is when it's already when it's already rolled out when, when it's already rolled out and you let it air out and then you put in uh, about half a cup of water now i forgot to bring my measuring cup yeah, that's about right. Something tells me you so can eyeball about. it there. Um, by the way, if you so. haven't been to the East End Farmer's Market, it's so great. It's right there along the Esplanade, along Navigation, right, near right. Uh, Original Nymphas. Mm -hmm. And this is something that happens weekly. Um, we're going to get into those details a little bit later, but I absolutely love that part of town. East End is great. Can we put this in there yet? Uh, not yet. I don't know if it's hot enough. Hopefully it was. I had turned it off. and She has, a, she oh, has her own heat gun. There. What is That's wow. a special yes. digital heat gun? <laughs> I know. Well, How it's what they you? use for... Oh, my God, you're 90 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too nervous when you point that thing at me, Frank. How many okay, times have so I... So you kneaded it all up, and once it's all formed into a ball, yeah. then uh, you... Roll it out. 
You get this. You roll it. Yes, and you get that. Yeah. And the finished dough should so look the, a little bit like So the finished dough like should white. be, okay, so you get it, you cover it and leave it there for a couple of hours. Okay, and because you want the dough to and rise. You need to, to let it rest, uh -huh, and then you're going to have something like this. Oh, that looks okay. so nice. So then you just get it, and you get a little ball. Okay, Celia, you and Frank, why don't you two work on rolling out the balls? I can't wait to put this in there. I mean, and Frank, don't let it splatter. And in oh, the yeah, meantime, yeah. while you're, well, you guys are working on that, <laughs> Veronica Chapa Gorzinski, okay, she's so the president of the East yeah, End District. Hi, welcome back to the Hi, show. Thank you for inviting me to join y'all. Of course, it's great to see you. And first of all, give us a little lesson in geography because yeah. I'm a huge fan of the East End, but a lot of Houstonians haven't ever been. I know, which is such a shame because you're missing out. Yeah. Um, so the East End is technically east of downtown. Mm -hmm. And our boundaries for our district is we typically say it's 45, 610, um, and the Bayou or Clinton Drive on the north side. So. And the farmer's market, if someone wants yeah. to come and experience the East End, the farmer's market is a great time to do it. I, that's probably the best place to come and do your cultural tourism. If you've never been to the East End, the farmer's market is every Sunday from 10 to 2 p.m. And we have a combination of both fresh foods and artisan crafts. So if you've not been... You can do brunch with one of our restaurants, and we have some delicious restaurants along the East End. Certainly. Um, and navigation, and then you can just come and do some shopping. There is a lot of development that's happening over in the East End, and one of the goals of the East End District is to really revitalize the infrastructure of this neighborhood because yeah. there is so much character and personality. We're not trying to get rid of that character and personality. We're just trying to help the neighborhood thrive a bit more, right? Yeah, and we want to promote businesses. So part of the reason that we're here today is because we love Celia's product. It is absolutely delicious. And a lot of our businesses in the neighborhood make handcrafted. Um, you can feel the love. You can taste the authenticity. And that's the experience we want to give to folks when they come over. So if it's the tamale guy or the buñuelo lady or the pinata lady or you just want to have a really good cup of coffee, you got to come out to the East End Farmer's Market on Sunday. And, 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 of course, the diversity of Houston is one of the biggest assets in our city. We do have a link up uh, on our website if you want to keep up with Celia, Veronica, everything that's happening over in the East End District. So just check out our website, HoustonLife.tv. That scene on Houston Life tab is right on the front. And uh, Frank and Celia, how's it going over there? It's going great. We've got the 360 degrees. And I got to put it in the in the oil, and now I'm gonna sprinkle. Sprinkling it with right? sugar. This All is right. a cinnamon sugar mix. Mm -hmm. It looks delicious, folks. It smells good too. We're gonna try some of those during the commercial break. So Celia, Frank, Veronica, thanks. Yeah. Great to see all of you. Still ahead on Houston Life, it's almost time to toast 2019. After the break, we're gonna mix up three delicious seasonal cocktails. Don't go away. Welcome back. Holiday parties deserve fun and festive cocktails, of course. So recently, a cookbook author and recipe developer, Leanne, recently stopped by to share three perfect recipes for New Year's Eve. Leanne, welcome back to Houston Life. Thank you for having me. And you have brought the right ingredients today because you know we love Prosecco, we love fresh herbs. You're going to show us three different types of holiday drinks to make. Yes, holiday cocktails are a must-have. And one of my favorite ones is this pear and thyme prosecco smash. I love using fresh herbs. Um, first of all, all you do is you take your pear, you're gonna, which I've already done, you're gonna puree it with some lemon juice, oh. and then you strain it. Okay, so you could just puree this in a blender, it doesn't need to be a food processor, nope, right? you can do a blender, or you can even muddle it. If you don't mind some chunks of pear, you can just muddle it in there. Okay. Um, so lemon juice and pear, you're gonna pour over some crushed ice. Okay. And then I've made some thyme simple syrup, and which- And how do you do that then? It's just sugar and water, equal parts, and then you're going to put whatever fresh herb you want in there. Today we're using thyme, and then you just let it steep for a few minutes. That is genius. That so is you could use rose rosemary, basil, any sort of any herb. Any herb, and okay. it makes a great holiday gift, too. That is a great idea. Uh -huh. And then do you end up straining it afterwards so you don't yes. get little bits of the herb in it? Correct, yes. You okay. do want to strain it afterwards, and you just discard the herb. And so we put a little bit of that in there, and we're just going to top it off with Prosecco. Yum. Beautiful. Little bubbly. You make it look so easy, Leanne. Well, all of these cocktails are really simple, so they're great for anybody to make at home during the holidays when everything's crazy. Um, this makes a great New Year's Eve cocktail also, and then you're just gonna put some fresh herbs and some pears in there and make it all gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Can I said, try it? Yes, please do. All right. And you must have such a fun time developing these recipes, right? I do. Is there yes. a lot of trial and error involved before you get it right? Definitely. I mean, sometimes you, you know, you hit the jackpot first try as 
the best. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, that is good, so right? good. That's a little too good. I know, that one goes down a little too easy, but. All right, the Pimm's Cup, this is something that's a tradition for a lot of folks, but you have a little different twist on it. Yep, so we are gonna use some ginger beer and bourbon and apple cider, so it's very festive for the holidays. Okay. Um, so again, we're just going to, do you wanna do this? Sure. Okay, so you can just pour a little bit of Pimm's into this. A little bit of Pimm's yep. into, how much? About, about half of that, because this okay. is a double shot. Okay. Um, and then you're gonna pour it over the ice. Right. We're going to do the same thing with the bourbon. Same Whatever. amount? Mm-hmm. So can about do, one shot? Yep, about one shot. Okay. Whichever is your favorite bourbon. Cool. And then you're going to do about um, a full one of those of the apple cider. Apple cider, okay. Mm -hmm. And is there a specific kind of apple cider you need to use? This is a honey crisp. You can use whatever you have, whatever your favorite, again, whatever your favorite is. Okay. And then you're just going to top off with ginger oh, top beer. Top it off with ginger beer. A little fizzly sharp ginger flavor so delicious very nice and then we're just going to garnish it with some orange slice oh you did an orange and an apple and an apple look how beautiful that looks yes and the orange is um actually a little squeeze of fresh orange was supposed to go in there too so we'll just do that even no the way problem. you slice your apples Leanne, you make it look so fancy well see these are simple garnishes that really make a difference so um little gonna, tips and tricks i'm gonna hold on to the okay. garnish oh, yeah. so it doesn't so hit it doesn't me in the hit. face <laughs> no. it's a little big but it makes Ooh, oh wow Isn't that good? that's delicious I, know, I love that it's one. good and that is a uh, that's a strong cocktail it's a strong cocktail so you might only need one. Oh, you've come to the right place but <laughs> mm. Mm. worth it absolutely delicious yep. now mulled wine this is something that during the holidays a lot of folks may like to have on the stove to try to keep yeah. the aroma going so tell us how this you make perfect. it okay it's super easy um, again take whatever your favorite wine is I'm using a Cabernet here okay I'm just gonna pour it uh, into the pot. So it's a red wine, right? A you, red wine. So you could do like Pinot Noir, Cabernet. Yep. Whatever you have on hand will work. Okay. We're going to go ahead and turn on the stove here at about medium heat because we're just going to warm it through and we're going to put a little bit of brandy in here, just about a shot or two. I love how you eyeball everything, Leanne. Yeah. It's also <laughs> very oops. good. Yep. Okay. Oops, oops, a little too much. Oops, oops. Okay, and then we're going to crack a cinnamon stick in here, and you want to crack it, and don't worry, we're going to strain it afterwards. Okay. A couple orange peels, and then we have sugar, clove, nutmeg, and allspice. Okay, and about how much sugar is in there? This is about an eighth of a cup. An eighth of a cup, okay. So I don't love mine super sweet, but if you want it sweeter, you can obviously increase the sugar amount here. And then the goal here is just to get all the flavors to blend, right? You're yes. not bringing this to a boil at all. No, no, no. You're very just low very heat. low heat, just warming it through, and then you're going to just let it steep for about five or ten minutes. Okay, and then, and then when it's, it's ready. ready to serve, how do you strain it? Uh, you just get a fine mesh strainer and just pour it over, and it'll take all the spices out and all the little bits of little cinnamon. Little bits of cinnamon mm -hmm. stick. Okay, and then and I then love garnish how you served it here with a little garnish, the cinnamon yeah. stick and the orange yeah. slice. And then you, you have this very genius double-walled glass cup. Yes, those are my new favorite kinds of coffee mugs or tea mugs, and they look, they're great oh for a mulled wine. Isn't that just cozy? It and is cozy. It's delicious. It makes me want to curl up with a By blanket next to the fire. Yes. Leanne, these are fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is the perfect time of day to have a little holiday spirit. We love having you on the show. Please come back and I see will. us anytime. I will do it. And in the meantime, if you all would like to connect with Leanne, you can check out the Scene on Houston Life tab on our website. And don't go away. We'll be right back. This is delicious. Okay. It is so good. All right, if you're expecting guests for New Year's Eve, why not make an impression with your dinner table? Oh, I love this You segment. got to. Rainy Richardson, design expert at Houston Design Center, is here with three easy ways to create these beautiful tablescapes, no matter what your sensibility is. And Rainy, are these really easy? Because this is like fancy stuff you've got I here. I cannot yep. tell you how easy these are. I am all about the um, festive celebrations, and New Year's is the biggest of all, right? So do you pick a color first, like gold? I think it's sort of gold and cream. For the, New Year's. the truth is, is what these are, are dinnerware sets that I had in my cabinet or that a friend had in their cabinet. I did not go out and buy the dishes. What? So you accessorize them the right yeah, way. Exactly. You use what you have because the dishes are the expensive part, right? Right. Sure. And then you just kind of accessorize around those. So that's what we did in each one of these instances. Well, and here you have three distinct styles. So you've got the bubbly style. Next, we'll get into a little bit of a farmhouse style and then the eclectic. But oh. let's just break so down. This is our favorite. 
Really? Well, that's a good I thing. I wonder why, frankly. <laughs> that's a good thing. You no, know, I've never seen it before, honestly. Uh, I mean, I mean that's a very, very clever. I'm just going to hold it. Well, I think one of the best <laughs> things about um, a really great tablescape is that not only is it fun and festive, but it also includes a takeaway that your guests can take. It, it decorates the table, but then also your client or your um, guests can take it home with them at the end of the night. And so um, here they get to take a yeah. mini bottle of champagne. Hey. I like name cards because if you have more than six people, it's yes. like, where do you want us to sit? It's like, well, just go looking for your name. That is so true. You want to avoid that awkward moment. Yes. That's it. And you also want for your guests to know that you were expecting them and that you're happy to have them in your home. And, and when you, you can have spell a their name, name right. Exactly. That's a, that's a good thing to remember to spell the name right. Frank, yes. P-H-R-O. Okay. So also, this gold flatware, this is so pretty. And Isn't I know that? you guys have probably seen these in stores. These can be pricey. Even Target has these for like two bucks a piece. But Two bucks for a gold right here. I'm not even kidding. How much was it? Do you remember? I don't remember. I can tell you that not the much. plates are Kate Spade. They're under $100 for the whole setting. Um, this particular design was designed by Missy Stewart. She's a fabulous designer who actually did a tablescape in our showroom at the Houston Design Center, and she won best theme out of 17 competitors. Well, I so, can see yay, why. Missy. So what's this theme all about, the one in the middle? This is very on trend right now, right? The farmhouse thing. Oh, like farm to table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah also yeah, Joanna yeah. Gaines and it. Fixer Upper, and oh, yeah. everyone wants to live in a farmhouse, you right? You got it, or silo. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag shiplap, right? So, um, Don't say that three times. Yeah, I know. I know. This is um, good. What is this? So that was actually a napkin ring that we tied a little ribbon onto, so it becomes an ornament, and again, it's a takeaway for your guests. What do you do with the napkin uh, ring? That's always been my problem. <laughs> we, we use napkin rings a lot, but then it's like, okay, my napkin's now out of the ring. What do I do with the ring? Uh, I don't know what you do with the ring. Rain. You just kind of put it on the side, I yeah, guess. Pick it up. Wear it as an earring on drag night? I don't <laughs> know what you're saying. Not, better not take our... No. <laughs> no. Um, and then, if neither of these are kind of your vibe, you can do an eclectic vibe, which is great for everyone. Um, here, we did not have a napkin ring, so we tied some ribbon around this napkin, and who knew? Perfect. You know, and that is a great idea because, like, I agree with Frank. Like, napkin rings, it just adds more stuff to the table. And what a great option. It's inexpensive. It looks great. And you don't feel bad about it cluttering up a drawer you, after the dinner. You, exa you just throw it in the trash can. No. Now, this particular charger is a wood charger. It was $60 from Bearings Hardware. Oh. Great place to shop. And again, we have an ornament. This is a letter H from Pier 1. Well, this is fine china. $4.95. Yeah, it's Tiffany. Yeah. Thank oh, Tiffany. Wow. And a little Culver... Uh, stemware here yeah. but the china though again if you're on a budget which isn't right mm -hmm. this is something that you can go thrifting for you can find all True. kinds of and dishes and they don't and all have to match but then right. a lot, and a lot exactly. of people are afraid to pull their wedding china out or whatever because they don't want to break it yeah. And we're like, you know what? If it breaks, you know. If you're not the using it. If you're not using it, right? why do you have it? And people spend Says so much you, money on that stuff. And you have a cabinet full of Versace. I do. And we use it, and we use it all the I time. I love it. And we put it in the dishwasher. I we have it. plastic all over our furniture at home. Oh, gosh, <laughs> that keeps it very nice. Um, all right, centerpieces you know. are really important. But you don't want to get too high. Because then you can't see the person across the street. Exactly. Table. That is so true. Everyone has a vase that they've used before that's up in that cabinet, you know, above the refrigerator. Yeah, you can't reach. Bring it down. <laughs> uh, put some white flowers in it. Add a little color and texture if you want to. Everyone has candlesticks. These happen to be luxurious. They're from MAI in the Houston Design Center. Oh, they are beautiful. But you have some less expensive one at home. Everyone does. Yes. You can add your taper, taper candles and then voila, you voila. have a centerpiece. You make it look easy, yeah. right? Yes. My age, I like uplighting. Downlighting. <laughs> Downlighting is harsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Rainy, thanks again. All right, if you'd like to connect with Rainy, I love your name, Rainy. Thank you. All right, check out the Scene on Houston Life tab on your website. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you guys for having me. So, so much fun. fun. You are fun. So that was great. great. Have a great Christmas. Thank you. All right, still ahead on Houston Life. In need of some extra luck in the new year? Well, who is it? <laughs> We're going to share some lucky foods that just might do the trick. And by the way, you can log on to clicktovote.com to play our little food and luck trivia game. Don't go away. All right, this is why they invited me today, because they would get free weather.
<laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. I'm heading down there later tonight for the weekend. It's just beautiful on a day like today. Perfect little north wind flattens that water and pushes enough of it out so you get a little bit of the cleaner water coming up and so it's nice and blue. Temperatures right now on the low 60s. It's beautiful out there. I hope you have a good Friday plan. In fact, if you look at the satellite radar here, it's quiet all across Texas. In fact, I have no issues. Even in, on the west side, there's a little bit of rain back towards San Francisco and LA, but the big story has been right here with all these airplane delays that have been a bit of an issue as we've gone into today. In fact, you can see 102 minute delay in New York, 100 minute delay in Boston. So a bit of a mess there, but for us, we're in great shape. Here's the power planter, 60s for the rest of the afternoon and then low temperatures only down to about 50 overnight. So it feels pretty good out there. I think you'll be in really nice shape. A lot of clear sky. By the way, today winter begins at 4 23. So that's the first day of winter. Armed Forces Bowl for U of H Saturday. Sunday looks nice. We got a little back door front coming in. So temperatures drop from 74 to 68. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, fairly nice. 60s and 70s. So not bad at all. Derek, you got big plans, I hope? Oh, you know, big plans. I need to do <laughs> some shopping at some point. Oh. Yeah, I, Amazon will drone it right in. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm beyond help. Franklin, thank you for that. We'll see you in just a little bit. Okay, so it's been said that some foods might help bring good luck. If you eat them on New Year's Day, we can all use a bit more good luck. Sandra Pinales Williams with Hardy's Fresh Foods is here to explain the meaning behind some of these lucky foods. And by the way, a reminder, you can play along at clicktovote.com. You're going to be quizzing me about lucky foods, Sandra? I is that sure how am. this is going to go? Yes, sir. So get ready. Okay, I'm ready for it. I, I see you've brought a variety. You have fresh yes. fruits and vegetables, but you also have some fish and some pork and yes. black eyed peas. Yes, sir. So uh, what we did was we brought five of the seven lucky foods for the trivia game. Okay. And then the two party trays is actually from our Texas Harvest Kitchen. So for the holidays, uh, a lot of chefs don't have the time. So we provide the party trays for them. Oh my gosh, so that's yes. a huge time saver. Absolutely. Well, you know, we're huge fans of Hardee's. Yes. Well, let's jump right into the game okay. and uh, tell me what I need to do. I'm okay, here. so I have questions and then the audience is also gonna chime in and um, Participate. Okay, perfect. All right, so put your thinking caps on. It's on. Um, first question is, which country eats peas for pennies, greens for dollars, and cornbread for gold on New Year's Day? Is it A, Austria, B, the U.S., C, Singapore, or C, all of the above? Peas for pennies, greens for dollars. Okay, so they believe that eating these foods will bring them wealth? Absolutely. I am going to say... Singapore. I'm not sure why our viewers are saying the U.S. Do we do that in the U.S.? Where have I been? Okay, <laughs> actually, what's the answer, Sandra? Correct answer is the U.S., yes. Um, actually, eating 365 peas represents good luck for each day of the year. Are you sure about this? Yes. I've never <laughs> heard of this in my life. Okay. And the green symbolize money in a prosperous year. Well, yeah. I am eating all the wrong foods. Okay, we'll start eating healthy. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> number two. Next question is, which country eats pork because... The pig roots forward, unlike chicken who scratch back when they eat, representing progress, okay? Is it A, Canada, <laughs> B, Mexico, C, Germany, or D, all of the above? You know, I'm just going to take a stab in the dark and agree with our viewers and say Canada. This is a very hard quiz, I would just like to point <laughs> out. I did not study this in school. Okay, What's so the, answer, Sandra? the correct answer is Germany. Oh, it is Germany. Yes. Yeah, so, and here we were presenting the fried pork chops with the red beans as the dish. Oh, here. I see, the red beans, okay. Yes, sir. Next question. Next question, which country eats fish because their scales resemble coins and they swim in schools which invoke the idea of abundance? So is it A, Vietnam, China, C, Japan, or D, all of the above? Again, this is a very complicated quiz. I would just like to say, uh, the viewers are saying Vietnam. I will agree with our viewers. Okay, is it A, Vietnam? The answer, actually, it's all of the above. Because as long as the fish is served whole with the head and tail attached, it symbolizes a prosperous year from beginning to end. So oh it's my not goodness. just the Asians, though. The European also um, believe and do the fish. Do you have to eat that fish eyeballs, too? Uh, some people do. Mm. I don't. <laughs> Sounds like good luck to me. All right, moving on. Okay, so next we have the pomegranate seeds. Uh, question is, which country eats pomegranate seeds because the red color represents the human heart, denotes life and fertility, their medicinal properties represent health, and their abundant round seeds represent prosperity? Is it A, Turkey, B, Thailand, C, Malaysia, 
or all of the above. I'm going to go again with the viewers, even though you guys have led me astray a couple times so far during this very complicated game we're playing, I'm going to say all of the above. Um, <laughs> it's a turkey. <laughs> a turkey, okay. Yes. But pomegranates also, they're great. They're full of antioxidants, right? Absolutely. I will eat these by the spoonful. Yes, yes. We get them Help from yourself. Costco. Okay. <laughs> All right, last question. Down to the grapes. So which country eats grapes to bring luck for each coming month of the year? So is it A, Mexico, B, Spain, C, Philippines, or D, all of the above? You know, I'm going to go with Spain. I'll agree with our viewers. Okay, that's part of the answer. You got one. It's actually all of the above. So in Spain and Mexico and other Hispanic cultures, they actually eat 12 grapes representing the 12 months of the year. Um, but the Philippines eat 13 because that's their lucky number. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I did yeah. definitely learn something during yes, the folk quiz. we did. Let's talk a little bit about Hardy's Fresh Foods because you guys are family-owned, Texas business. You, you're celebrating your 75th anniversary this we year. We are, yes. Uh, we are a local-based uh, company. We have DCs here in Houston, Austin, and Dallas. So we actually just cater to multi-event um, companies. We do the restaurants, hotels, we do hospitals, even senior livings. So we are actually growing. And uh, with the party trays, we do have a new warehouse, which is doing the prepackaged meals. We're joining with the whole, it's um, great for the next year. We yeah. have a lot of new things coming. That is fantastic. It's a yes. huge time saver. And yes. you guys are doing something right because 75 years, that's a long time to be in business. Yeah. You guys have the best of the best. And no matter what kind of lucky food you all may be looking for, it can be found at Hardee's. Check out their website. Hardies.com if you would like more info. Sandra, thank you so much for playing the game with us. Thanks I'm sorry I was me. terrible. <laughs> uh, next time I promise to do my research do and some I'll do a little better. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks Still for ahead on me. Houston Life, it's time to meet our adorable pet of the week. We're gonna share, we'll share how you can adopt this adorable little cutie. Oh my gosh, take him home for the holidays. We'll be right back. Today's Pet of the Week is brought to you by the Houston SPCA, but first, a successful adoption story. Back in June, the Houston SPCA rescued more than 80 animals from a property up in Cyprus. Half were rabbits, the other half were donkeys. And many of the animals were suffering from malnutrition, as you can imagine, and untreated medical conditions. Murphy, an 18-year-old jack, had overgrown hooves. I remember this. Fly mm. bites on his legs and very low body weight. Oh, poor guy. He was curious and friendly, though, which made caring for him that much easier. After the Houston SPCA finally gained custody of the animals, Murphy was prepared for adoption. And Jessica and her family made the decision to add him to their herd in November. And he's been thriving there ever since. He now has a lush land for grazing. How about that? Don't you, we all should have that. Yeah. He has some horse friends to keep him company. It just doesn't get much better than that. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Donkeys are adorable. <laughs> I'm a huge, seriously, I'm a huge fan of donkey. <laughs> hey, joining us, I've dated a few, too. Uh, joining us now is Lisa Tynan from the Houston SPCA with another pet looking for a brand new home. Hi, Lisa. Hi. And little Poppy is with you today. She seems a little bit she's, unsure. She's unsure. She's settling in here. So she's only about three months old. So even, you know, aside from the fact that she's a little bit shy, this is a lot for a puppy to take in. But once she's settled in, she is, she's a little stinker, this one. She'll steal your socks. She'll chew on things she's probably not supposed to chew. And she does typical puppy things. Her markings are beautiful. Isn't she gorgeous? I, I mean, what color would you, it's sort of a sable it's, grayish. And in yeah, the sun, really it's silver. It like it's yeah, shimmery. She's beautiful, and she's got a widow's peak too. That's her. Little what kind thing. of puppy is she? Do you know? That's a great question. A she's, terrier. She's a something mix. <laughs> she's a when in doubt. She, right. She's a Heinz 57. Yeah, that's what my mom. Is. We always had those growing up. Exactly. Heinz 57s. Yeah. Well, and beautiful. the mixes. It's funny because Lisa, every week you come on, and we've talked about this before. How little Tex was so small and timid the first time we met yeah. him, and oftentimes when they come on the show, we're not getting a true sense of what their personality. Yeah. Uh, personalities are like. Oh, they'll, yeah. take on, they'll take on the people around them. Their Absolutely. And she was in foster with the, actually the cruelty investigator who rescued her from, uh, she and her mom, her little uh, dog mom actually weren't being taken care of properly. Um, and the cruelty investigator who rescued her is the one who fostered her. So was she 
was just one of the litter? Yeah, it was just her and her mom. We don't know what happened to the other puppies, um, but she spent time in a good caring home, and so she she just needs a little extra time to settle oh. in. That's all. Oh, she I didn't get the pet. Can I pet her? Yes, of course. Maybe, maybe you and Kevin should adopt another dog. I'm just putting that out there. Okay, we'll think about that. <laughs> okay. And I'm looking for my napkin ring, by the way. <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> if you want to look learn more about pet adoptions at our friends over at the Houston SPCA, just log on to their website, HoustonSPCA.org. <laughs> yes, we'll be right back. Stay with us. She is so cute. Along with the holidays can come an increase in drunk drivers on the road. So what should you do if you find yourself in a drunk driving related accident? Well, lawyer Willie Powells recently stopped by with one of his clients who was rear-ended by a drunk driver. Here's how she found help. So Willie, Ashley, welcome to Houston Life. And Ashley, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you got injured. Yes. So. I was driving um, at night. Uh, there was a red light, um, and I was hit from behind by a drunk woman two times over the legal limit. So it was absolutely oh, wow. heinous, yeah. Before the accident, I was actually well in health and well in work. Everything was going wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so after the accident, I had to seek medical attention. I was having a lot of pain. Um, one of the first twists in my story, and I believe that's why Willie really wanted me to share my story today, was I was actually uh, pregnant during the accident. Oh my gosh. Yes. So I was later admitted into the hospital um, with a very uh, tragic miscarriage. Oh my gosh. That must have been heartbreaking. Yes. And here you are trying to make a living, go to work, you get injured, you yes. lose the baby. Yes. But in the meantime, while you're injured, medical bills are racking up. Racking up. What made you call a lawyer? It was, there was just so much going on. I, I was hurting, I couldn't sleep. Um, it was just getting so costly. I had to call a lawyer immediately. And it was just, it was a really tragic experience for me. And Willie, before calling you, Ashley had tried to figure this all out on her own, figuring that it was a huge process. How were you able to help her? You know, um, and that's one thing that we're very proud. Ashley is a business owner, and so she has a very, you know, solid mind. And so a lot of people who get involved in accidents are like, sometimes I, can, I think I can do I can it. I can do it myself. She worked really hard. She tried really hard, but she gave us a call because there were some difficulties that just still were a little bit beyond uh, what she could handle on her own. And so I was glad to get her call. Uh, we knew exactly what to do immediately. We jumped in and we made sure that we got this problem fixed. And obviously for Ashley, yeah. this is a life-changing event. Sadly, Willie, you see cases like this constantly and that's one of the reasons why you knew exactly what to do. Way too often, the research was showing back in 2016 over uh, 10,000 deaths, 10,600 deaths from drunk, drunk driving related accidents. And that worked out to about one every hour. And, and I, that's, just, that's just way more than oh what it goodness. needs to be. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. It's an epidemic. epidemic. And so uh, we know exactly what to do. You know, somebody hits you and they're drunk, give us a call. Or they hit you and they're drunk, anybody hits you. But particularly, if a drunk driver hits you, give us a call. We know exactly what to do to get it fixed for you. Well, it's far too common. And also at the holiday season, it seems like with all the parties, you know, the events that people are going to, this is a time of year when drunk driving accidents typically tend to go up. Yeah, everybody's thinking about the Christmas presents. They're thinking about meeting family, uh, going to the party and all that. You've got to remember to be very responsible. Uh, you know, we're not saying don't drink. But we're saying if you're going to drink, drink responsibly and use smart choices like Uber, Take like you. Lyft, taxi, family member, carpool. Don't get behind the wheel wasted. Yeah. Please don't take a life. Exactly. Please. Well, and Uber is so easy. It's also yeah. peace of mind. Like we use Uber all the time. Yeah. It's so great, so easy, and yeah. and it'll save you a it's lot of headache. A lot of headache. You know, it's uh, you know, if it's a group, get a limo. Something we like to do. Everybody can go together, and you don't have to worry about driving. 
just be safe. You want to make sure that you're safe in the decisions that you make. That's great advice. And Ashley, we're almost out of time, but what advice would you give for someone else out there who may be in the same situation you were in? You were hit by a drunk driver, yes. you were overwhelmed by the process. What would you say to them? Yes, uh, the, the second twist in my story was I actually had a terrible lawyer, liar in my opinion. Um, I, f I fired him, Willie helped me right away. Um, so I would suggest to everyone, you know, don't drink and drive, find an Uber as Willie says and I, I just, I adore him so much. He will pick up the case immediately and it was such a success and it really restored my business, my life, my mental health, everything. Good. Well, I'm glad you were able to get back on your feet, and I'm glad you were healthy and well, Ashley. Thank you for sharing a bit of your story with us today. Yes. And Thank Willie, you. thanks yeah. so much for stopping by. Thank you so much. Great to see Always you. Always a pleasure. Love the bow tie. <laughs> if you like to with Willie. Or to learn more, you can log on to his website, WillyPowellsLawFirm.com. And don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Oh, this was like holiday lights on steroids. This was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. Frank, please come yeah. back and hang out with us anytime you want. It's beautiful, and you have good food. We do I have know. good food, and yeah. sometimes we have cocktails. And um, <clears throat> hey, uh, no. And no. it's a big deal right now because the station we're celebrating in our January, 70th, our seventieth, the whole month of January, I mean, and all our first. I mean, we were the first on air in Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can tell you from the weather standpoint, we were the first to have Doppler radar. I remember when we had the six-minute advantage. We had our own radar up on the dome. The most accurate station well, in town, you, folks. I don't know about that, but <laughs> we try. Uh, well, first seven-day forecast, first ten-day forecast to put out there on the air. Yeah, we did a lot of firsts. We were the first to bring you the, the little time and temperature and the little scrolling banners in this market. It. We did a lot. I of think stuff. maybe we're the first uh, station to have a dog too. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, first radar are. and now Tex. Yeah. yeah. Well, Franklin, thanks so much for hanging out hey, with us thanks, today. Hey, sir. You Happy have a great holiday. holiday. If I don't see you, I'll and see you, you next too. year. Right. Okay. You all. We'll see you soon. Have a good one.